So this week I am going to divulge a biltong recipe which has been in use on our farm for many, many generations. But of course, before you can make biltong, you need to hunt an antelope. My brother is currently stalking a less bucket. For those who do not know what biltong is, it is a very, very delicious spiced dry meat. Very similar to the American jerky, but way better. That was a hit. It's running, it's running. Still going. Which, which uh, going, going. I don't know where James shot at this. Fat just grab, grab it and throw it over and cut his throat. And I'm just scared of the kicking hoof. I mean, I just, I just put a headphone in his head and it's dead. Ah, there, there we go. Sorry. You pass me that knife. <laughs> Bled a lot internally. I shot it at an angle running away from No, Clara. Nicely. Sure. Okay, you blue yeah. There's a nice blood trail. That's why Clara came running up the blood trail to come find it. Dragging a dog and a, and a buck. <laughs> Blaze park, that you can do. Okay, some final steps. Thank you. We're just trying the damping with Laura on it. Your suck. So this is a very easy recipe to create. Um, it is 50% salt, 25% ground coriander, and 25% white pepper. You can go ahead and add some uh, coriander pieces to it, and not finely ground, but I prefer to put the fine ground coriander on it so that it gets saturated into the meat. So what you want to look for is you want to look for where the muscle meets the muscle. So like for example in here, this is where the muscle meets the muscle. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to separate the muscles from each other. that the muscles just come apart and what you should have is you should have individual muscles what I have there is I have one muscle now when you cut your biltong make sure you slice against the grain so you can cut it like that or you can cut it like that and with that's what I'm gonna do which is going to give me a little bit of a longer piece um, just because at the end of the day I do enjoy a bit of a bigger stick Make sure you slice it against the grain. That will be your smallest piece. And then you've got about the thickness of your thumb. That's the thickness you want to slice it. Thickness of a good steak. It's the second piece. Just done a leg and one or two of the back straps. Um, what we're going to do now is how much biltong spice do you put on a piece of biltong? What I usually do is I roll it like that, give it a shake, and that's the amount of biltong spice I put on biltong of that particular recipe. It won't be too strong, won't be too weak, 
will actually be perfect. But just like that, turn it over, roll it over, give it a shake. And I'm already drooling in the mouth. <laughs> this is one of my favorite meals. Just make sure you pack them nice and neatly on the one side. Um, they will juice. You leave them in the juices, in their own juices for 24 hours, and then you can hang them up. Um, and that will preserve your meat. Your meat won't go rotten. And uh, it also depends on how humid your climate is, if you might need to buy a biltong dryer or something like that. But for our humidity and our climate, it's beautiful just to do this. And it will work perfectly fine. As you can see, all the liquid that has actually come out of the biltong, um, out of the meat, because of the salt. Look at that piece of meat, man. This is gonna be so nice. So you can actually see here how the water has actually uh, come out of the biltong compared to this. So this has just been powdered. That's been a few minutes. Quite a big difference. I've got to wait and let this sit for 24 hours and then we are going to go and work it again. I'm just gonna quickly show you how to make biltong hooks. It's pretty simple. You just bend your wire over like that. And then you want to see how long you want your shaft of your your hook to be. You want it to bend back over about that point. And so you just go for it. Pretty easy. What you should end up with is something like that. So all you got to do is trim the ends to the middle. Okay, and then all you're going to do is you're going to cut every second wire. And what that's giving you is that's giving you perfect hooks. So what we have here is we have the meat. We're going to smoke some of it and then we're going to dry it, just dry some straight. Um, the cold room has actually sucked a lot of the moisture out of the meat already. What I have here is I have a fridge that I have modified. To take a rack and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this meat stick a hook through it and hang it on this rack once I fold this thing up I will start uh, I'll put some smoke in the bottom and you guys can see how this thing smokes that's what it should look like <sighs> pretty much full but uh, none of the pieces are actually touching um, if, even if you look in there there are a few flies flying around but that's fine they're gonna get smoked out just now what you do is you close that part. Now you've got your tin. And now you need some coals. There we are. We've got some really good coals in there. Now you want the smoke. Now I use mesquite tree, which is that thorn tree looking tree over there for smoking. It's actually a professional, what professionals use. Or smoking gammon and stuff as you can see I've soaked them nicely they're nice and wet and all you got to do is throw these shake off any excess moisture on there you see the glow in there and you've got lots of smoke coming out the top here just give it five minutes and we'll be filling this thing nicely with smoke we have to vent it every now and again down there to keep it cool but uh, the smoke that rises up through the bottom here will, uh, will definitely be the type of smoke we want. So let's give it five minutes and have a look again. You can see the smoke's coming out the back vent holes quite nicely. So if I open here, look at that smoke. It's getting warm, but it's not hot. We don't really want to open this to let the smoke out, but if you have a look what it looks like in there, it's also quite smoky. Got another... 15 minutes and then it will have been an hour but I just want to take a sneak peek in here just to show you the smoke got out of that smoke I don't want to lose it all but uh, looking good mm, it's smelling good too anyway you guys can watch the sunset while I um, go ahead and keep on uh, working here not to interrupt a beautiful sunset or anything but uh, I thought I'd show you the amount of meat that my brother and I consume pretty much every day. So this 
is a nice rack of ribs from a sheep and that can go onto the fire that's not all two chops each so my brother and I will finish this in one sitting and if you take a look at the size and not small but um, this, is the, this is the diet we live off while we're busy having a look at that you also take a glance in here look at that smoke you can hardly even see the meat in here but uh, this stuff's getting nicely smoked now so yeah looking beautiful leave it give it another 15 minutes or so just release the heat as always just keep on releasing the heat flame grilled racker ribs what could be better we don't have these physiques for nothing okay guys this is done well pretty much done so i like the amount of smoking that's happened i'm gonna call it with this we're pretty close to being done here these uh, sticks are drying out quite nicely Take a look at this. Take it to my old grandfather's bulton cutter and uh, <laughs> just take a look at that. It's beautiful, beautiful meat, salted to perfection, and uh, one of the nicest meats you'll ever eat. Perfectly smoked, too. It's uh, really nice. You might ask why I've got these gloves on. I'm just about to go and hunt a porcupine with a spear. So you can look forward to that.